Dalton Disney's. Dalton is a freshman from Hoover, Alabama, double majoring in marketing and music. Please welcome Dalton to the stage this time. Picture this. You're sitting in a concert hall on a very lovely evening, waiting to be serenaded by an orchestra. And as the performers start to quiet down, a conductor walks onto the stage, bows, and stands in front of the ensemble. The conductor then puts their arms up, and all of a sudden, beautiful music happens. Well, how does that happen? Many people not in music are left wondering what role a conductor serves, or if they even serve a function at all. And let me tell you, they serve quite the crucial role. I myself have served as drum major the past two years in my high school and have conducted multiple choral and instrumental ensembles. That is why today we will be talking about three roles of a conductor, to unify the band's speed, sound, and style. First, and what a conductor is mainly known for, a conductor dictates the speed at which the song will go. Now before we continue, let's define a couple terms real quick. A measure is the physical space on a page that the music is written. A beat is the internal musical pulse within each measure that determines how fast or slow the song will go. And for our purposes, the term 4-4 means that there are four beats in every measure. Now within 4-4, there are four different hand motions that go with each beat. You come up for beat one, in for beat two, out for beat three, and up for beat four to prep for beat one of the next measure. And each beat must be crystal clear, or else the speed, or tempo, could get confused throughout the ensemble. In the textbook, Musical Performance, A Guide to Understanding, by Elaine Goodman, used at Cornell University, the most important part about any ensemble is that the individual parts fit together. It is necessary, therefore, for each performer to be able to play in time with the rest of the ensemble. Each performer has their own individual understanding of the tempo, and so a conductor will take all of those individual tempos and make one collective tempo for the band to follow. If that tempo is ever unclear or confused, then the band can start to shift and eventually fall apart. If you've ever heard an orchestra warm up, each player is practicing their own part at their own pace, and it sounds like a very musical train wreck. That is why it is crucial for a conductor to keep that unified tempo throughout the ensemble. However, timekeeping is on the lower rungs of the responsibilities of a conductor. A conductor also helps to give the band a unified sound. Now, according to Berklee College of Music, one of the most prestigious music ensembles in the U.S., conductors are leaders and interpreters who shape and refine every aspect of the performance's sound, and when working at their best, unify the performing group. In top-level ensembles, each member is already an advanced soloist. Well, in an ensemble of 50 members, you already have seven to eight different section parts that have to be tamed into one cohesive sound, but within each section, you could have two to five different interpretations. So a conductor will listen to what's happening in an ensemble and make decisions that best combine those soloistic interpretations as well as the conductor's own musical decisions based on their study of the pieces. And a conductor will sit down with every piece that a band is playing and go through every single measure of every section's part and make decisions like what sections have the melody, what sections need to be brought out, what sections will the ensemble struggle with, and make all of these decisions before they ever step in front of the ensemble. But sound choices are only half of the decisions that a conductor has to make. A conductor helps to lead the ensemble in conveying the stylistic and emotional choices within a piece. Now there are many different genres of music, and what makes each genre unique are the little nuances within each one. And so a conductor's job is to convey those nuances to the ensemble and the audience through their conductor. In an interview with Dr. Jonathan Rogers, my conducting mentor, who earned his doctorate in choral conducting and is currently a worship arts coordinator at Stanford University, he once told me something about conducting that I will never forget. Conducting is a visual representation of an auditory experience. And this can be conveyed in many ways, from the usage of cueing within a piece to the emotion and style through those cues in the conducting. So for example, if I was to cue in flutes at a very quaint part, cueing them in like this, 
has a much different feel than if I was to cue trumpets in at a very feisty part, like this. And each cue has their own sound and style. Now the way conductors choose which cues to use is to just listen to the music and let it guide them. In an interview with Classic FM, Grammy Award-winning conductor Pavo Darvi once said that his mentor, Leonard Bernstein, a world-famous conductor and composer of famous works like West Side Story, he once said, you have to do all of your homework and be very prepared. But when you step on that podium, throw it all out and feel. In conclusion, conductors serve three main roles within an ensemble. To keep the band at the same tempo, to give the band a unified sound, and to help lead the ensemble in those stylistic and emotional choices. I hope this helped to inform you more about the responsibilities of a conductor. And now you know, when all of those stars align, and the conductor feels it, and the ensemble feels it, that is when music happens. Thank you. Thank you.